Today on Community Cooking, we have guest chef Cheryl Dent with us in the kitchen. We're making a Silky Road soup along with a frise salad, plus how to make an eight minute egg and a lemonade ruby sipper to top it off. We're cooking with some of the best chefs from right here in our own community. So grab a seat, get comfortable, because we've got another awesome menu coming at you in under 30 minutes. This is your Community Cooking. Hello and welcome to Community Cooking. I'm your host, Kirk Lines, and in our kitchen today is a familiar face. It's Cheryl Dent. Hey, Cheryl. Hey, Kirk. Uh, welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. It's great to be here. Well, have you been keeping track? What is this, like number 40 or 50 appearances? <laughs> we give gifts at some point. Oh, we do? Yes. Oh, good. Actually, well, so I'll... stick around. Okay. Keep coming I'm back. I'm excited. There's a gift involved. Well, you know what? You have a... A, a, a very eclectic menu, I one do. with, with once again with all the names that you like to make up. I know, I know. We have something. Follow the yellow silky road. A silky road soup. Silky road soup, and we I had to tell you about soup. Soup is one of those things where you go to a restaurant, and you're really excited. The chef will come out and explain what the soup is, and invariably the soup to me will be like baby food, like right. soups. They're too thick, they're too thin. So I've had that. I know what you mean. Right? And I, I, I'm, I don't dig that either. I don't dig that either. Mm -hmm. There's a big difference between a pureed soup yeah. and baby food, and, and I've yeah. gotten that, I'm in, and I don't really like it. And I went to this one place in San Francisco, and it was really cold outside. And my girlfriend said they have the best carrot ginger soup, and I got it. I swear to you, it looked like a big pile <laughs> of baby food. I was like, this, no. This is not right. Too many carrots. They don't the the, the yeah. proportions. I was like, I'm going to come up with a fail-proof soup that's kind of a mix and match. So today we're doing a carrot. It's a car it's kind of a play on a carrot ginger, but you could actually make it with butternut squash. You could do pumpkin. Sure. You could actually swap out the ingredients, and it's so easy. It's basically one pot, and then we blend it and we puree it. And literally, it is like silk. Oh, oh. my gosh, it's okay. so great. I can tell you're excited. I know. I'm going to slow you down because okay. you, 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 you got to get through the rest of your menu, Cheryl. Oh, right. We've got, oh, right. We've got a frise salad, frise and that's just sort of a, a frise salad. Yeah. We've got no crazy name there. Well, with, with, with some bacon lardons, and it's my new take on a hard-boiled egg. It's an eight-minute egg. It's a perfect egg. When you slice the egg, it's like creamy inside. The white is perfectly set. It's like the best hard-boiled egg you could ever have. And then a drink with a crazy name. Yeah. Ruby. Red. Sipper. Ruby Red Sipper. Remember okay. we're doing Yellow Brick Road, kind of a play on Yellow Brick, and then click your heels, there's no place like home. Ruby Red Sipper. Well, I, you I know. I want what she's having. Okay, <laughs> listen. <laughs> let's make soup. Should we make soup? Tell me first, let's go talk okay. ingredients. Okay. What do we need to make this Silky Road so, soup? So, th as I was saying earlier, with the soup, what's great is it's really kind of a mix and match soup. So, we're using carrot and ginger as really kind of our base ingredients. Okay. But the trick with the soup is you don't actually need tons and tons of carrots. We're using what? That's like five, four, five small ones, and that's plenty for um, this portion. Okay. We're going to use leeks. some leeks. A little bit of romaine lettuce. I know that's the secret, not romaine, uh, arugula, Thank but you, you can use romaine. I was going to say that. I've yeah. never purchased romaine that looks like that, but okay. <laughs> On the menu, you can see, I say you can use um, you can use romaine or arugula. I like arugula, a little bit of pepper, you okay. know, just the flavor. Right, I love it. Yeah, and then we're going to use um, juice of a lime plus some zest. Okay. And then we've got coconut milk, honey, coconut aminos, which are like soy sauce. And then we've got some great, we've got ginger, and we've got um, shallot and garlic, and then we've got coriander, cumin, Thai spice, a little bit of Aleppo chili, oh, I love it. and a little bit of turmeric, and then to thicken it, we use soaked cashews. How cool is that? That's really cool because yeah. that helps out our, our, our lactose intolerant friends. Oh yeah, beautiful. Yeah. This actually is, is lactose intolerant. It's not vegan, and this is sort of the secret ingredient. This is homemade bone broth. Uh, so that, trendy, right? Uh, oh, major. The bone broth is everywhere right yeah, now. Yeah, and the bone broth. What's great is you're you're putting in so much collagen, hyaluronic acid, and bone broth is basically it's like a stock. But you don't use as much meat on the bones. You're using the back, the neck, the feet. So it's got a lot of great. Um, got a little a friend who's coming for soup she as wants well. Bone broth, I know. I know. All right, you show me how to make this soup because okay. I, I, it sounds delicious. Oh, I am so excited. So I'm going to turn myself on. This is my. This is my. Um, yeah. That's it go. here. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to start with a little bit of. This is some really minced. Garlic. Now again, this is the kind of thing where depending on how much you want. And you're putting that right into a dry pot. Yeah, right. Because you know what? Here's the thing. I actually added oil to this uh. because I prepped all this last night. So what I do, my little cheat is I soak it so my garlic is actually ready to go. And the same thing I do with the shallot. That's Just not a bad idea. Right? Like you can that. actually kind of prep that and then we've got these great shallot. Okay. okay. So we'll start with that. I think we need to get this. Uh, yeah, it's this the second one up. Yeah, I think we're good. Yeah. Okay. So we got that. Um, I'm gonna have you. 
Um, you want to mince? Give me a little piece. I roasted these jalapenos. You got it. A little piece. They're really spicy this time of year. Have you noticed that? Oh, you got a lot of seeds in there. That's why. Right? I just want a little bit of, um, I want a little heat, not crazy. Okay. I think we need to crank this baby up. Okay. You can never tell with um, cooking with electric, you know? Yeah. Okay. That's good. What do you think? Right. I think that's perfect. Great. That's a, is that going to be too much? I think. No. Okay, we're going to go a little. No. I like it. We're going to go a little bold. All right. Again, if you're making this for your kids, you could definitely take the seeds out. It would be less hot. You could make it a little milder. Right. Then we're going to add in our wonderful, this is um, some ginger. And the, the thing with the carrot ginger soup, it's really about balance. It's about not doing too much. I think a lot of people tend to overdo the ginger, and then okay. it becomes kind of a little bit on the bitter side. So we're just going to let this. Speaking of carrot, can I get some of that going yeah, for you? Yeah, just give me a little rough chop on the carrot. Rough chop it is. Here it comes. Here it comes, baby. Uh, this is as rough you as can, it gets. If, <laughs> and remember, it's going to be pureed. So. Right. And you don't even have to really overly peel these. You know, I just did a little quick. Super quick on that. Right. It's not know? like it's a, a presentation next to a, a filet mignon or anything. Right. <laughs> right. You're, you're, you're putting these into a pot and zhuzhing them up. Right. Perfect. Right. That looks great. great. And I'm grabbing as he's cutting, so don't do that at home, right? <laughs> Unless <laughs> you have just amazing timing with, yeah. your, with your partner. <laughs> yeah, right? Okay. That's perfect. And then why don't you grab me? I'm just going to use some of those. Those are, the, those are the leeks. And I think the leek just gives it a really awesome. nice... Another depth of flavor, and that's another one of my pet peeves with soups is it feels like they're always kind of one note, the flavor, right? Yeah, two-dimensional at best. Yeah, two, yeah two-dimensional. I'm a big fan of the leek. You don't have to sell me on this. It <laughs> is like uh, a way better onion. Right? Sorry, onion. <laughs> I'm a fan, but I'm a bigger fan of the leek. Right? There you go. Yeah. Okay, I feel so like we hear the sound that we're, we're, we're looking for. This is perfect. Okay. And again, since we're going to puree it, we don't have to go too crazy. We don't have to let this really cook down or caramelize too much. It's just about getting a little of that flavor extracted. Yeah. But that's it. Sweat it. Simple. All right. Okay, so we're going to add in our, this is our bone broth. And again, if you wanted to make this vegetarian or vegan, you could always use um, veggie stock would be great. Sure. Even water. You know what? Why not? Why not? That's how, you know, you know what? what? Someone somewhere is making that with water. Yeah. Tell you that, yeah. And that's what's great about this recipe. It's really mix and match. Mm -hmm. And then here's the thing, coconut milk, which I think this really gives it that great, did we, oh, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> it was, okay, so this is interesting about coconut milk. This <laughs> happens. Um, coconut milk can kind of solidify. So I think it was in the fridge. Yeah, that's there great. And that's what you want. And we actually want that creaminess from the coconut milk. So yeah, we'll just put that in there. Yeah, this is perfect. But you know what I noticed with a lot of the coconut milks now? They are adding a lot of water to them. Yeah. Now you got to be real careful too because they're not all created equal. You've got to make sure make sure you get unsweetened. Yeah. There'd be nothing worse than having making this delicious soup and then going to taste it and it's more of a dessert. Right. Which so. this actually could become kind of a little bit more of a dessert. You could make this a little on the sweeter side. We're going to add a little honey. Okay. Okay. Well, there's mm. a difference between like adding a little sweetness to it and, <laughs> and using like a sweetened product. <laughs> Can you tell I'm like fanatical about coconut? I'm like, I'll just lick that spoon. I'll just clean it. You, you let the your freak flag fly. <laughs> <laughs> no judgment. All right? um, so honey is great. You could always use um, different kind of sugar. You could use brown sugar if you wanted. Okay. Um, you could use, there's, uh, what's the new? The coconut sugar is kind of hot now. So what's next? Oh, next is um, lime juice. Oh, you know what? We need to throw the bacon in the oven. Okay. You All right, I can do that. Okay. I'll hand you a lime. You hand, me, uh, you hand me the bacon. Perfect. Okay, so we'll do this at 350 for about, about 15 minutes. Beautiful. Just and so it gets crispy. Yeah, nice and crispy. And I love putting it on a rack like that because it, it's so much easier for cleanup. Yes. So I'm going to do some zest. Yes. Love lime zest. Oh, absolutely. Oh my gosh. And that's just going to make it taste even mm. more Thai. Oh, that smells amazing. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. That's the stuff. Right? And then a little juice. Oh, can you grab some, uh, the basil, a little bit of basil, a few leaves, we'll put that in there. Okay. And then what I like to do is I like to save the lime for garnish and then we can also after we blend it, we kind of check the flavor and see how we like it. You know, this right. is the kind of thing. Right, adjust to it, sure. Just adjust <laughs> it. And then we're going to add in, these are cashews. And what I did with the cashew is I soaked them overnight. We're going to try one. They're super they soft. They get soft when you soak them. And it's a great way oh, yeah. to add a super creamy element to the soup. Adds vitamins, minerals. So, And you know what? You could always use um, soaked almonds if you had to. It's super versatile. Okay, okay. so let's we do our spices now. Yes. Okay. So I've got a little bit of turmeric. 
This right. is Thai, you know what? I'm just gonna dump so I don't get my turmeric in there. You got this it. is a really nice green Thai chili. Is that something oh, amazing? Oh yeah, that's nice. Oh, love that. Real nice. And then I've got some cardamom and I've got uh, coriander. Oh, beautiful. It's gonna just be very little, aromatic. Right? This is like healing soup here. I know, and just with these spices, because they are so potent, just start with a little bit and then work your way up. Sure, you can always add. This one I love, this is Aleppo chili. Okay. So I'm just gonna add a tiny bit of that and then why don't we go ahead and add a little of the arugula in. You got it. Now another thing you can add, we're not gonna put in today, but I just put it out as, is the green apple. That's another thing you can put in your soups to thicken it, but also to give it some great- some sweetness, Bright sure. sweetness. That makes sense. Sometimes I'll do pear, you can even roast those and then add those in. And with the arugula, you wanna put that kind of in at the end because this doesn't take as long to cook. So what are we gonna simmer this for a little bit? And yeah, Maybe like 15 minutes. Okay, I tell you what, it sounds to me like this would be a good time to go to break. We can clean up here. Okay. We can get prepared for our, our next dish because we've got our salad mm -hmm. and we've got our drink and we've got to finish this up. Yep. So uh, why don't we do that? Yeah, perfect. All right, we'll Great. see you back here on the other side. Don't go away. They say you don't have to be so strong, but this is my mother, my purpose. Strength is not optional. See, I lift her now like she raised me then. So I know my strength is super, but I'm still human. Oh, well, look who's here. To help me, she'd have to help every day. Every hour, every ouch, every time my wife calls for help. I mean, maybe she could help me make her lunch. But the crust, all the crust has to be cut off the corners. Welcome back to Community Cooking. I'm here with Cheryl Dent, and we have got our Silky Road soup cooking over there on yep. the burner. On the way to the Yellow Brick Road. S smells great. Yep. Uh, you're going to show me how to make an eight minute egg, correct? I'm going to do an eight minute egg and I want you to grab that bacon. I think it should be done. Yes, I smell, uh, there's so many smells going on in this kitchen, right? <laughs> <laughs> It'd be very easy to burn bacon right now. I know, it's, you get overwhelmed. The Thai soup is so yeah, flavorful. That looks so, good. I think so we're done. So I've got my saucepan. I've got some water boiling. I know typically when you make a hard boiled egg, you start with cold water, then bring it to a boil. This is a little different. This is the perfect egg minute egg. The thing you just have to be careful is lowering it in really gently. Okay. Into our boiling water, perfect. I've done it where I've just kind of dropped them and they do crack. So this is honestly the hardest part of it. So I'm just gonna do three and then we're gonna set our timer to eight minutes and they're gonna be so good. Yeah, there's nothing worse than cracking an egg into boiling water like that. I know. You didn't wanna do that. Don't you love my little old school little timer? Yes. Is that gonna be too loud? We're because? good. Okay. We're good. So should we make our French herbe de Provence dressing? Absolutely. To go with the bacon lardon. Oh, the bacon smells amazing. Wee oui, wee. Oui. Wee oui, wee. Oui. So I got this recipe, my friend Michelle, and Helene, they came back from France, um, Michelle's French, and using yogurt in your dressing helps emulsify it and keeps it set so, you, so it doesn't break, so you can make sure. it a couple hours before yeah. a party. Makes it, gives a nice creaminess to it. Yeah, so we're gonna start with our mustard. You know, I'm gonna have you, maybe I'll have you whisk. Okay. Let's see, we'll do that. And we got our, this is just a plain, like Greek style yogurt. Okay, so we're looking at about maybe a teaspoon of mustard, about yeah. a tablespoon, like a scant tablespoon of and it, again, it's one of those things where it really depends on how mustardy you like it. Do you like more mustard, less? And these are these beautiful herb de Provence. Okay, I'm gonna hit that with some salt and pepper. Salt and pepper. If and then want. I'm gonna have you whisk and I drizzle. How about that? Go That's for it. Or I could do both and you can start on the salad if you like. Oh, I'm right, pretty, yeah, okay. Yeah. I just love doing this. Not, not my first rodeo with salad dressing, <laughs> so we're gonna get, you know, look. Yeah, I'll check and do that for you. I don't know, it's just kind of okay, fun. Okay, you wanna be a team, team I don't player. know, it's just kind of fun to do the slow drizzle. All right. Look how fast that is. I mean, yeah. there's no reason to make, you know, buy store-bought dressing. I mean, this is, yeah, it's and gorgeous. It's, I don't buy store-bought dressing. I'm kind of really against it, actually. I know, but I just want to show everyone how beautiful that looks. If you once they make a store-bought dressing that is more delicious Homemade. and and less expensive than anything oh that I can make, I will buy it. How about oh, that? Oh wow, you can really taste the mustard. That's fabulous. Okay. That looks good. And you're good on the olive oil. I think maybe a little more. Let's go just a little a more. Just a touch. Yeah. Sure. Oh, this looks beautiful. Oh. Perfect. And again, if you like a little more mustard, you could definitely bump up the mustard. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut up my lardon. Our eggs look great. We got about another five minutes. Oh, that dressing is gorgeous. Right? God, it's beautiful. Right. Are we are we close to what? Uh, maybe we need to get the bacon yeah, on I'm there, gonna right? Yeah, I'm gonna do the bacon lardons. If you wanna um, carefully just sort of hand me the strips and I'll just cut those into nice little. How about if I do little... this? I'm gonna pick this up. Yeah. You can take the strips I... off of that. Yeah. These are perfect. Excellent. Oh, yeah, those look, are great. Aren't those gorgeous? Well, you know what? This really is the best way to make bacon. Right? You know, bacon really does very well low and slow. Yep, low you and know, slow. It doesn't want to be cooked fast because you got to render that fat out. Yeah, and, and this is 
It's such an easy way, and especially like, you know what? I mean, who wants to like splatter it all over your <laughs> stovetop? I know, like, so this is kind of no mess. You just take the aluminum foil, you know, you, it's super easy cleanup. Mm -hmm. And I just love, this is, now this is the food stylist to me. You notice I'm like arranging them. I'm like, stop. Right. <laughs> okay, that's perfect. Okay. Look at that. And, and then we're just going to wait on our eggs that, and we're good to go. Right. Uh, blending the soup. I bet oh, you that's yeah. next. You know what? Let's blend the soup. Okay, so I'm going to get my blender out. Actually, I'm just going to move these aside. Yeah, I'll take them out of your way. Okay. I got my blender. Okay. Here. Okay, let's see. Okay, perfect. Now, this is the only part you want to just be a little bit careful with is transferring it. Actually, this isn't super hot. So. Okay. But it's still hot. You know. So, you know, kind of go, I'm going to just do it a little on the slower side, just do a little bit at a time. You know, the, one of the things that I do... Use an I immersion make, blender? I use an immersion blender. Yeah. And, you know, you can go to any sort of like, like sort of department store mm -hmm. and for $20, $25, pick one up that is yep. literally going to last you probably 10 years, 10, 12 years yeah, before it, it gives out. And that way, you don't have to do any transferring. Nope. You can do it right in the pot. And uh, you're good to go. Because this we're actually got to do a little bit in batches. You know what I mean? Right. Because the, the last thing you want to do. <laughs> <laughs> the great blender implosion. Oh, We've all gosh. done that. And you're going to remove the top here too, right? Oh, yeah. Use, that's uh, let people know about the little steam hole. Yeah. So if you've ever wondered what this is on top okay. of your blender, whenever you're blending anything hot, you need to take this off. Yeah. But you need to put like something on top of it. I like to do a little paper towel. Like you can use a tea yeah. towel. And again, you don't oh, want to overfill your blender from experience. I mean, I've done carrot ginger soup up to here, and the whole thing just like, no boy, bar, no. she blows. Mm, yes, and there's nothing like hot soup all over your body, face, and kitchen. Now, if you really want to get, if you really want to geek out, what I, whenever I blend, I actually put on earplugs because it's so loud. Because I blend so much stuff, so if you want to really be safe, this is fun. You can actually put on earplugs when you blend, and then you're really blending safe. Perfect. Safety in the kitchen, don't and you love it? And when we go to the Metallica concert afterwards, we can <laughs> just keep them right in, right? Soup's awesome. on, man! Awesome. Awesome. Rockin' soup, oh, man! I love it. We ready to go? Yep. It's loud. I know, I get crazy. Is right now the soup is a little bit thick, so mm -hmm. I'm just going to add a little more. This is more. what we talked about earlier. The we don't want we don't want baby food. <laughs> no. Yeah, exactly. So I just want to add a little more just of the liquid, and that'll thin it out. And you could always add just a little bit of water too. Right. I found for me, for most vegetables, a, a, a pound of vegetables to four cups of liquid. That's yeah. That's that's pretty much perfect. what I found works out now. Some okay, I'm going to go again. Okay, I'll finish later. Oh, you know, do you, <laughs> you want to break open the pomegranate while I'm doing this? Sure. sure. Okay. I still want... Okay. You want to taste? Gra no, grab me a spoon. Oh, okay. <laughs> Like, what, what, I'm what, doing what? sign language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is a loud blender. I know it's loud, but I, again, it's Silky Road soup, so I got it's got to live up to its name, right? That's right. It's got to be silky. Oh, oh, look, perfect timing. Okay. Eight minutes up. Eight minutes is up. Okay, so I'm just gonna set this aside. And you want these, uh, the the just the a little in into here, correct? Yeah, perfect. Okay, okay right. so so into our ice bath, our eggs go. So perfect. Now I lost my spoon. Oh, there it is. Okay, I'm gonna set this off to the side. Okay, turn this off. Okay. How are the pomegranates? I feel like they're a little early this year. They're not. A little bit. They're just a touch. A little bit. But, you know, but you know, get what you can. It's not, it's not really critical. It's yeah. just going to give a little bit of flavor. We're not going to. We we're not going to complain over early pomegranates. So we had one explosion, one egg explosion, which is kind of fun. It looks like an alien. Look at that. So we got a little bit. <laughs> so, 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 you know, maybe do four eggs because that, that does happen. And you're going right into a water bath so that the, the, the cooking stops. Yep. We'll stop the cooking on that okay. and then we'll peel them. We don't actually, we can peel them pretty soon. And what you can just do is if you do get one of those little alien life forces on the side, you can just kind of, you can just sort of enough? snip it. A little more. A little so more. Touch more. Okay. Yeah. And then throw in, um, a, we're doing cocktail now, right? Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, so um, a little bit of sumac as well. How fun Into is Into the cocktail. Yeah, we're doing this, doing a little sumac. Do you think it's, nice. do you mind if I peel, start peeling the eggs? No, please. Okay. So they're ready to be peeled. You go yeah. for it. Yeah, I'm just going to, my hands are kind of used to working with hot things. So I like to peel my egg using a, a paper towel. I find it's the easiest way to catch everything. It's kind of the fastest. Oh, these are perfect. How's that, that pomegranate? Nice. Yeah, yeah, this one's a little bit, a little bit better. These are from my friend's yard, so I think they're they were. Oh. We, we picked them a little early because the birds get to them, so they probably should have stayed on the tree maybe another three weeks. Yeah, but they could have used a little bit more time. A little more time. Okay, that's, all right. that's perfect. We got one. We're still getting all the the the, the healthful qualities that we we desire in our cocktails, <laughs> right? Since we're making cocktails, but actually <laughs> we're not putting any alcohol because I was told we're not allowed to do alcohol on the show anymore. Oh. So we'll just have to pretend that we're putting in some rum. Okay. Yeah, we'll we'll make believe. Okay. So we've got that. We've got our eggs peeling. Mm -hmm. I'm peeling okay. my eggs. Why don't you juice me uh, two limes and a lemon? Put that in there. Oh my gosh, these are going to be so great. Okay. You're going to see how perfect this eight-minute egg is. I'm going to do all three. Okay. I'm going to half a line here. Yeah. Still oh, and we need a little nice. zest too. So we could zest. Into where? Into the, into this. Into the Into drink. our um, cocktail shaker. Oh, that lime smells amazing. Mm -hmm. This one was a little weird. I don't, let's see how this one looks. This was the one that had that alien life well, attachment. Well, peeling nice and easy. That's, that's always a good thing. Right? You know, that's the, the, nothing worse than a hard uh, to peel egg. I know? know. I think this is the best way to do them. You just put them in the ice bath and you can literally just peel them right away. They look perfect. Okay, that's great. And then I'm just going to, see, look at this. No muss, no fuss. Look at that. The shell is gone. Okay. Whoops. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and slice my eggs and put them. Oh, yeah, lemon. Just Thank do two you. lemons. Oh, and we need some fresh mint in there as well. We're going to do that. Lots of fresh mint. Okay. Do we put the sumac in yet? No, not yet. Okay. This is kind of my new favorite, like, ingredient is sumac. Yeah, you definitely don't think about it in terms of drinks, but that's kind of also the trend right now is using sort of savory ingredients right? in cocktails. You see it everywhere. Yeah. And you know, we can charge $20 for it. <laughs> Today, we're going to charge $25. And then I've got a little of this basil. I thought we could just throw a little of that in the cocktail, too. All right. So, I think that we should going to be a very herbaceous and aromatic cocktail. Right? Ooh, we got some in our yogurt. I'm just going to eat that. Mm. OK, then we're going to do honey. One more lemon. Okay. Now, you could also do, if you wanted to, you could do stevia in there as well. If you don't like honey, you could use maple would be great. You could use regular sugar would be awesome too. I mean, there's a lot of options you could do with the cocktail, you know? Sure. Okay. Right, one more. One more. I'm just going to, let's just do. A lot of lemon in there, huh? Yeah, why not? We're making a lemonade. Oh, all right. Right? It's the... The ruby lemonade. Ruby sipper. Sli sipper. <laughs> we got to click our heels. There's no place like home. Okay, that's great. All right. And then we got to muddle this baby. Okay. There's our muddler. Muddler. Okay. This is so fun to do. Okay. All right. All right. Muddle away. Muddle away. I'm just going to clean up real quick. Okay. And then maybe just a touch more honey. Oh, yeah, that's gorgeous. It definitely is developing a ruby color. Right? Which is, I think, the, the, the real purpose behind the, the, the pomegranate, correct? <laughs> and the, the sumac. And the sumac. Yeah. Let's see here. Just a little more. Okay, great. Good. Well, I think we're, we're kind of ready to go. All right. Yeah. This is great. Well, I tell you what. Why don't I finish up here? Okay. Um, we'll take a break. We can clean up. Uh, we can get our salad prep, get our soup ready, yeah. have our drink ready, and Perfect. lay out like a really nice meal. Okay. All right? I love that. All right, we'll be right back. Don't go away. There are several major plates that form the surface of the Earth. Where the North American and Pacific plates come together, they create hundreds of faults in California. When these colossal plates suddenly shift, massive earthquakes could strike. Say, for example, under your feet, the risk is real. So is the benefit of earthquake insurance. Get the strength to rebuild. Learn more at earthquakeauthority.com. Welcome back to Community Cooking. It is that time. And when I mean by that time, I mean time to taste. And time to drink. Yes, I mean, look at it. This really looks pretty awesome. I mean, we, we have our, our, our Silky mm -hmm. Road soup that you made. 
you have our frise salad, which is really like a sort of a riff on a salad lyonnaise yeah, when you exactly. look at it, mm -hmm. which is one of my favorite salads. Oh, so happy. And this drink that really came out far more beautiful than like I even imagined it would. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's really a very lovely looking drink. It actually looks a little, it's not as ruby red, um, even though I'm, I'm calling it the ruby red sipper, but it it's still. It looks like ruby grapefruit juice. Ruby so. grapefruit juice, yeah. Hand me a spoon, girl. Okay. <laughs> Let's do this. And um, Thank I think you. our color palette kind of worked great too. We got Absolutely. the yellow, the egg, and everything. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, Let's see what we got here. Mm. That is silky. Wow. Wow. Mm. Well, you weren't lying. You know, that's a really nice consistency. Mm -hmm. Really nice. You can taste. It's got a good level of heat to it. That's delicious. Is that great? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. And yeah. I like that it's the carrot is sort of more of a back note. It's not super, super carroty. Where no. again. No, mm. not at all. Fabulous, right? Okay, now, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going for the salad, like a piece of salad and bacon, but then what I'm going to do is I'm taking an egg with my fingers. I don't you care. You are? Uh-huh. I just want an egg right now. Mm. You know what I want to do? I want to do egg Dressing's with bacon. Right. I'm going to do this. Look at this. And how fun would this be? Oh, the yolk. good. Perfect. How cute would this be for a little appetizer? Look at that. For mm -hmm. like a party? Look at that. Yeah. You could serve it, you know. This, yeah. How fun would that be? You could serve those. Mm. So I'm just going to do the whole half egg. The egg is perfect. Is it perfect? It's so creamy and mm. buttery. Mmm. Really good. Wow. Delicious dressing, too. I love that. Is that great? Oh, very good. Mm. Very good. The bacon is perfectly crispy. The yolk. Mm -hmm. And how easy was that? I mean, this is, this bacon is really good. What do you say good. we wash it down? <laughs> okay, after I have another piece of bacon, it's so good. I'm going to wipe my hands before I grab that. Okay. Mm. All right. Mmm. Now, bacon. what we did was we poured that muddled con concoction into here over ice. Right. Added some lemon kombucha. Yeah. And All then right. I put in a few, a few little, po little pomegranates in there. And then the mint that you're seeing is the stuff that just kind of slips through the strainer. Let's see. Let's take a t taste. It's great. It's great. And if you wanted to imbibe, oh. Oh, yeah. pretty much anything would work in here. You could do mezcal. You could do vodka. You could do tequila would be great. White rum. Even dark rum would be beautiful. It's Even like a, a little whiskey float. Would taste good in that. Oh, whiskey would be great. great. Good job. And again, you can adjust. I don't like stuff super sweet. I think this, the balance on this is perfect. No, sweetness level is excellent. Cheryl, mm. nice job. Thank what you. What can I say? This is really, really delicious. And um, oh, what a lovely meal. Thank you. I, I mean that. I, I highly encourage everyone out there <laughs> to make it. Uh, and it just goes to show you that some of the best cooks are right here in our own community. On oh. behalf of myself, the crew, Cheryl, thank you for watching thank you. another fun episode of Community <laughs> Cooking. See you next time. Cheers. Cheers. If you'd like a copy of the recipe seen on this show, send us a self-addressed stamped envelope to the Office of Cable and Community Relations. That's 3350 Civic Center Drive, Suite 200, in Torrance, California, 90503. Be sure to note the show number displayed on the screen. And don't forget, you can find all the fresh ingredients used on today's show at the Farmer's Market. Visit the one here in Torrance at Wilson Park. That's located at 2200 Crenshaw Boulevard. They're open every Tuesday and Saturday from 8 a.m. until 1 p.m. rain or shine. And if you'd like to be a guest on our show, email us at communitycooking at torrentca.gov and check us out online at youtube.com slash torrentcitycable and like us on Facebook at Community Cooking TV.